You're the guy people call when they need a helping hand, moving furniture, unloading a truck. But lately, your shoulder's been acting up, and you're the one who's calling for help. And that's the moment you realize you can no longer shoulder the load. The Joint and Spine Center is Cincinnati's leading destination for orthopedic care with a range of surgical and non-surgical treatments. So when a moment has the power to change the rest of your life, go to the one place with the power to change it for the better, the Christ Hospital Health Network. This changes everything. The Pound This Podcast is brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network. This is the Pound This Podcast, episode 739, The Power of Affirmations and Positive Self-Talk with Nick Alessandrini. I want to lose weight, but I don't know how to get started. What should I meal prep every week? How do I get those sweet booty gains? Inspiration for your healthy lifestyle. The Pound This Podcast with Amanda Valentine. Hey there, friends. Welcome to the Pound This Podcast. Before I get into this fantastic discussion with Nick about affirmations and positive self-talk, I want to tell you about a very positive force in your health and fitness journey. That's my girl, Sarah, and team fit with me. She is a fantastic health coach and has a whole team of fantastic health coaches, including people that are going to help you with your physical fitness, your relationship with food, and also meal plans that are reviewed by a registered dietitian. So if if you're kind of struggling in your journey, you need somebody to hold you accountable, somebody to give you some information and teach you about nutrition and physical fitness, help you with some mental health stuff, help you with issues if you have gut health problems, thyroid diseases, PCOS, hormonal dysfunction. Sarah can run some labs, give you some information on that and help you reach your goals. If you're in need of a great health coach, definitely check out Sarah and Team Fit With Me right now. Get 10% off month one of all packages, plans, and add-on services when you go to teamfitwithme.com slash pound this. You can find that link in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening to the Pound This Podcast. I am Amanda Valentine. I am joined with coworker and mentor, Nick from Cincy 360 Fitness. I'll let you say your last name. Alison Drini. Yay. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> mentor. That sounds official. Well, yeah. Well, you've been like mentoring me for, geez, for what? At least like six months or so now? Five, six months here at the gym on I Mondays? I guess it has been that long, hasn't it? Yeah. Helping me like learn to become a better trainer. Hopefully it's helped. It's helped a ton. You look like you're feeling more comfortable. Yes, thank you. I mean, I mean, as you know, I'm very much in my head about this whole process. <laughs> Which I think we all are. You know, everybody's you know first year as a trainer. It's I don't want to screw this up. Yeah. You want to give somebody a good workout, and there's that that blend between what the client says they want and what you know that they need, and you have to you know finagle the program in order to give both of those things so you don't lose their interest. Yeah. Well, and also just understanding how the human body works. Yes. That's like that's I think that's a really hard part for me is just knowing the like the mechanics and just the anatomy part of like how everything is so tied together and you're moving this this one way it affects this and this and this and that's like just something that I've not really done a deep dive into other than just like oh I know I like this movement and I think this is doing this and going from that headspace to like having to know like all of it not only for myself but helping other people it's just lots of learning it's a lot it's constant yeah but it's been cool and I think that is a good intro into this conversation because as I've been spending the last year kind of struggling with confidence issues and in, in this like brand new learning process, I think affirmations have helped me a ton. I think affirmations have helped me a lot through my whole journey. And I would say that, especially in the last several years of just kind of having that more positive mindset, not to say I'm going to go into like toxic positivity and then mm -hmm. nothing is ever negative, but to just kind of have those things that <clears throat> play in my head that help me out of tough situations or to, you know, just, you, even with like the learning become a trainer thing, it was just like trust the process. Like you just got to do the process. You need you need to be in this. There are no like wrong decisions. Mistakes are just learning opportunities. Like those sorts of things of like framing it that way instead of like oh god I suck. I'm never gonna learn this, and just having that like no you're good and you're learning and it's step by step. And then looking back six months ago and where I am now, be like oh wow I've made a lot of progress from them. It just doesn't feel like it day to day. And I think affirmations kind of work in that way that you repeat those sort of things to yourself and you can't notice it immediately but then you turn around and look back at how you 
handle situations differently than you would have before. And you're like, oh, wow, just talking to myself in a different way works. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think um, it's easier to kind of think of that in a way when you are thinking of speaking to somebody else. And oftentimes I'll, I think I've said this to you before, like, hey, would you, would you say that to your best friend or your husband or, you know, a child? Would you mm-hmm. say these words that you're saying to yourself? And if the answer is no. Then why are you saying those things to yourself? Because you are just as much as anybody else in the world are um, deserving of love. And that means love from others, but also love from yourself. And if you can kind of think of it that way as, oh, wow, you know, there's no way I would ever say these words to my best friend, then, okay, cool, well, don't say it to yourself. Yeah. So. Yeah, and so, like, even catching, I'll even say my name, like, I'm like, God, Amanda, you're so stupid. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. You know what, even, like, even if I am just kind of being, like, silly with myself, I'm like, that's still, that still means something. That's still, like, creating a pathway in my brain of maybe I should reframe that a little bit instead of, calling myself dumb all the time like to your point I wouldn't go up to to you in a, any sort of serious manner and be like wow Nick that was really stupid right and mean it you know what I mean right. like God, that's harsh but yet I'll say, I'll say that to myself yeah yeah and I think it's something that I struggle with um, I'm, I'm really hard on myself I think we've had this discussion um, when we did the um, the personality tests oh yeah I did um, Enneagram Enneagram and I know that we scored very similar mm-hmm. in personalities I think some of them were a couple percentages off from each other but um, you know one of my top was the achiever which is basically I just expect the world out of myself and yeah. when I don't achieve what I think I should be achieving then I'm really hard on myself and it's been a, a constant battle um, and only those very close to me probably see this side of me, but um, I do have um, kind of a, I guess, um, natural kind of ability to kind of put myself down at times. And it's something that I've tried to um, fix. I want to say probably a majority of my life, starting from a young age, my dad was, I was blessed enough to have a father that kind of taught me about affirmation and visualization and meditation from a young age. Um, um, But without that teaching, I think it would be a lot worse off than where I am now because I I do. I have a tendency to be like, wow, that was really stupid. Like, I need to do better than this. Yeah. See, I don't get that impression from you at all. Like, you, I mean, my impression of you is just a very positive person. So I don't really see that. Which again, it's like you never know what anybody's battling with. Right. That I wouldn't, I wouldn't guess that. Oh man, I bet Nick is just beating the hell out of himself all the time. Like I, it seems like you just have such a po- positive outlook. <laughs> and it is, it is ebb and flow, right? Like um, I think I'm really good at turning on a positivity, and I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna say it's fake because it's not. Like I do, I do really feel positive majority of my life, um, but when you know the the stress of always trying to turn that on for our clients here say you know 35 hours a week or whatever it is and for my my coworkers and for my family and trying to be that person for everybody i think sometimes there is okay well there's going to be some negativity somewhere and i'm really good at not unleashing that in others yeah um so usually it ends up coming back to bite myself and um, I think that's what affirmation is, though, is is being able to identify when you are doing that to yourself and kind of trying to, in the moment, realize that you're doing it and flip fly, flip-flop that mindset and turn it into, okay, well, I realize what I'm doing here. I got to switch this up. I got to switch up the way I'm thinking. Even if you're not necessarily feeling that way, trying to at least switch up the words that you're speaking to yourself. So what are some daily practices for you as far as like affirmations? Like you said that, you know, where your dad taught you visualization, meditation, affirmations. Like, what is there anything that's like kind of set for you that's part of a routine every day? I would say mindfulness is definitely at the top of like of those three is probably the thing that I tap into the most. Um, And that usually is on a drive to or from work, um, downtime between clients, Um, or even like if there's an especially, um, stressful situation, sometimes I just kind of take a a step back and just kind of 
take some breaths um, and realize that maybe the situation isn't as bad as where my mind is taking me. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the the thing that I do the most. And the the affirmations, I think, probably help me more than any other. But that's the one that I feel like I ebb and flow with. I will be really, really good with it for maybe a month of it at a time. And then I start fading. And then I, I don't even realize that I'm fading away from the practice until I start feeling overly stressed. And I realize my thoughts are turning more negative than they usually are. Um, and then I'll have to turn it back on. And, you know, she's, oh, well, yeah, of course. I haven't been doing this practice. Why haven't I been doing this practice? Yeah. And even hearing me speak right now, the thoughts that are going through my head are, okay, I just spoke that into the universe. I just spoke that I get on and off. Maybe I need to start speaking. This is just, this is constant for me. Yeah. I, this is what I do. This is what I practice. I practice affirmation and that's it. That's, that's it. As opposed to, you know, I want to be real with you and say, so people, other people know that it is, it can be an up and down kind of thing, just like fitness, just like eating healthy, just like anything else sometimes can be, sometimes are going to be better than others. You're not in this perpetual state of just blissful affirmation all the time. But, um, you know, like I said, the way that I'm speaking now, what I want to do is stop and think about this. Okay, I'm going to be better with this. I'm going to be better at affirmation. I'm going to, I'm going to keep affirmation as a, as a daily part of my routine. And usually it's, it's on the way to work is usually when it's usually kind of when some dark thoughts start to arise. Um, not that I dislike what I do, but, um, I do typically like to sleep more than I get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think that puts me into a negative mindset when I don't get as much sleep as I need. Um, and, and I'll be driving to work, like having these thoughts that, um, you know, okay, I haven't got enough sleep. How am I going to make it through the day? Like, is this, is this going to be constant? Is this the rest of my life? Am I, am I never going to get enough sleep? Like these thoughts start coming to my head and I, I got to, I realize that and I try to, I try to catch that and be like, okay, remove that from my thoughts and start thinking more in a positive light. I'm awake. I woke up this morning. We'll start there yeah. because when you, when you think of the fact that there's a possibility that I, I couldn't have I potentially wouldn't have woke up and I did, that's a beautiful thing. And when you can start thinking that way, okay, I woke up, who am I going to go, go see today? I'm going to see a bunch of really cool people today, people that I work with, people that I'm helping. Um, I am positive and I am the light and I enjoy what I'm doing and I because of what I'm doing, I better the world and start thinking in those ways. Yeah. And it really helps change the morning around. Definitely. Have you ever like listened to any podcasts or YouTube videos or anything that give you affirmations? Yes. I listen to those quite a bit actually. Um, cause sometimes it's, it can be difficult. Um, and I know I, I told you about Mel Robbins, um, I heard her on a podcast and, um, heard about her book, um, the high five habit, which I haven't read, but I heard her speak on it. And it was really interesting. Her thoughts on that. Um, her thoughts were sometimes you have a hard time connecting to the af affirmation because you don't believe them. Mm, yeah. And maybe all you need is a high five, right? So it sounds ridiculous, but her idea is when you get up in the morning, look at yourself in the mirror Stop the thoughts that are about to happen about, oh man, you know, I look like shit. Yeah. How am I going to get through this day? Have you done enough? Like, look what everybody else is doing. Why are you, why are you still here? Like those thoughts start to come and it's like, okay, you don't need to say anything. Just look at yourself and give yourself a high five in the mirror. Literally slap the mirror because, you know, your reflection hand goes to hand. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I put it in practice and it, it's, it's really cool, actually, because um, she says that one of two things usually happens. Usually uh, you start laughing because you feel ridiculous, <laughs> um, which is what happened to me. Like I do. And I'm like, OK, that that feels weird. But now you have a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. Right. Like now you're laughing and you're like, OK, well, cool. And for no other reason but besides that you woke up that day. You know what I mean? You don't have to have a reason to give yourself a high five. It's it's just, hey, cool. I got your back. You're a human being that deserves praise. You're a human being that deserves 
um, a pick me up. Here's a high five. Um, or the other thing that she says could potentially happen was, um, you know, you start seeing the things that you have been doing and you kind of break down a little bit and, and, um, potentially, you know, feel heavy emotion from it. Maybe, you know, have a good cry about it. And usually that's the, the time where you kind of are able to pull it back around. Um, I didn't have that experience, but I can see what she's, she means about, about that. And like, okay, well, I just saw myself as a human being as opposed to somebody to crap all over. <laughs> yeah. And, um, because of that, you know, that's emotional because I don't usually give that to myself. So, you know, I do, I'll use podcasts and I'll use, um, you know, YouTube videos and I'll use those types of things when I'm having a difficult time saying those words to myself. If I'm not feeling like I'm able to actually get the motivation or the discipline to come out and, and say the words for myself, I'll listen to somebody else say them for me. And I think that can be really beneficial too. Definitely. And I think it's just one of those things of talking about like believing them. I think that's so important. Or I guess uh, not relying on other people to have to tell you those things for you to believe it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Of to somebody else to say, I think that you're a smart person of like, you know, if you say that to yourself, that it's meaningful. But sometimes it's just like, I don't know, I have found myself in that trap before, too. of Like, I don't believe it unless somebody else gives me that like that outside affirmation of it. So I think it's really kind of taking a deep dive into some of those things. Like, well, why don't I believe that about myself? And then do you really believe it? And then, I mean, you're the only person that you're going to live with for your entire life. Mm -hmm. So everybody else around you is going to shift and change because that's life and you can't be dependent on that. It's nice to get affirmation from other people. But I think that, yeah, if it's not coming from you and it's, it's so sad because I feel like so much of us have like grew up or been trained not to, to do that because then it feels like, oh, well, that's narcissistic. Right. Then it goes into this yucky place of like, oh, well, if I say that I'm intelligent or I say that I'm beautiful or I'm saying these things, oh, aren't I so full of myself? And right. then it, that those positive affirmations immediately turn into a negative and it's like it goes into this weird headspace. So I think it's just getting to the spot you know, I'm not an expert in this, but it's like kind of clearing that all out and journaling that out of like, well, what do I believe is true? And I think that everybody would, if you really d- dive deep into it, like, you know, are you an intelligent person? Like everybody is to th- their own capabilities. And like, yes, you are. And are, yes, you are beautiful. And yes, you are these things. And it's compared to, to what, you know right. what I mean? Of, of It's such a process to getting there and believing it. And I've been, I'm so awful at like taking compliments. It makes me feel like really awkward and Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with them. So I've gotten better at, and actually my, my main affirmation and it actually came, started from another person I had as my only tattoo is, um, is when I first started going to a gym here in Cincinnati and he was at the gym every time I was there and he just like looked over at me one day and he's like, girl, he's like, you are a force. And I'm like, oh. that's a cool one. And I'm like, I love that because it has nothing to do with like my body or anything else. It's like, no, you're just a force to be reckoned with. Like you are a force of nature. Like, I'm like, I just, it feels like an attitude. It just feels like how I show up in the world. Like yeah. I'm just a force. I'm like, wow. I'm like, that is like one of the first compliments where I'm like, I really love that and I accept that Mm -hmm. and I want to own that. And I'm like, I love it. And so for my affirmations, the way that you talked about getting them in every day is I have a little post-it notes and I have them above my like sock and underwear drawer. So I know that I have to look at them every day and I make sure I say them out loud to myself every day. Mm -hmm. And the one that's always in the middle is you are a force. And I kind of like end on that one of like, yeah, like that's just how I want to show up in the world of just like, you know, a positive force. And then that's where I have like the tattooed on my arm. That's great. As a, as a nice, with a little Pachamama on there too, of like a nice little like reminder of when I'm in those spirals and I'm feeling like shit of like, no, like I almost have thought about getting my other arm and just making it affirmations down my arm of tattoos. So I'm like, I remember to say them to myself because it does make a difference to be like, Oh no, I believe that about myself and that's how I want to show up. And when I feel like I'm not showing up in that way to call myself back to those things that like do feel true to me because I feel like I went through the process of sorting out what does feel true to me and what can I repeat to myself or, you know, and the thing is I'm not like one of the things I say to myself too is like, I'm an innovator 
because I just, I like that. I like coming up with new ideas and different ways of doing things. And that's subjective of what people think is innovative or not. Sure. But it's like, that's how I want to live my life. And that's exciting to me. So whether I've done the most innovation or not, but I feel like repeating that to myself also puts me in the space of, well, that's who I am and who I want to be. So I think I kind of use affirmations for that too of like, well, who do I want to show up as? And why not just start believing that about myself now? Right. Um, and I've just found that process to be super helpful. Yeah. And I, I, I love what you're saying about, you know, innovation and being an innovator because, um, you know, that's really what we are is we're innovation machines, right? Like you starting this podcast, you becoming a nutrition, nutritionist and a personal trainer that all started with a thought. Yeah. Like you had to think those things before they happened. And the thoughts are what happened first. And sometimes people don't give enough credit to the thought, mm. right? Because, oh, it's just a thought. Yeah. Okay. But that thought is the beginning of a manifestation, right? So if you can think something, then get some momentum on behind it then you think of other things to help you go that direction and you keep that mindset going toward those thoughts, then they keep spiraling and snowballing and then eventually it becomes a manifestation and it all has to start somewhere and it has to start in your mind. And that's what I think is so crazy is like your mind is literally an extension of the universe that you can control. And I don't think people give thought enough credit. Sometimes we just throw thoughts around. And that's what I mean about catching the thoughts before they spiral into a too dark of a place. Because if you continue to think those dark thoughts, you're going to have dark manifestations. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, thoughts are physical things. We just don't think of them as physical things. Is a noun. A thought and idea is a noun, right? So it is a real thing. We may not be able to touch it right now, but in the future, if you give it enough attention, you will be able to touch something because of that thought. And that's what I think is amazing. And that's what I've learned from, um, there's the book, The Secret. Yeah. You heard The Secret? I have. I saw the movie. Saw the movie? <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, it's the same premise. Um, it's um, Esther Hicks, um, mm-hmm. who I listen to quite a bit, and she is very much into a lot of the things that I was just discussing um, about manifestation Um, being something that is going to happen and you have to think that it is going to happen otherwise it's not going to if you think of the difference between where you are and where you want to be then you are not going to receive what you want you have to know that the thoughts create the manifestation i you know whatever it is in your life i am fit i'm a fit human being yeah i i'm comfortable financially money just flows to me You know what I mean? These thoughts create a scenario that eventually will become a real life manifestation. But you can't think of the space between the two. Otherwise, it's it's not going to happen. And I think that's always really fascinating listening to her. If anybody hasn't listened to her, I highly recommend it. She's um, yet to be in the right mind space for it because she can be really kind of out there. But um, I use her a lot to help me with manifestation. And okay, yeah, I, I understand what she's saying. Like, I just I have not been th- in the right mind space for this. Yeah. Well, kind of so, a, a more, I guess, grounded approach uh, um, than, than that, which I think all that stuff is awesome. But I think that some people are like, oh, that's far too far in the woo woo end for me. Right. Uh, we go into like, do you ever, have you ever read and listened to Brene Brown? No. Uh, Brene Brown is awesome. And she's a researcher and she, uh, she researches shame and vulnerability. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't really go so much into like affirmations or things. But one of the things that she talks about a lot that I think ties into this is what is just a story I'm making up in my head. Right. And then from that, I think that if you're making up this story in your head, that's going into a negative place or like for me, I don't do well with overwhelm at all Mm -hmm. overwhelm will spire me in a very bad place and i'm just trying like just letting my brain go out and do those things then i'm manifesting more of that right i'm just create i'm staying in that headspace which then becomes so much stress which shows up physically in my body so that where your head started with just thoughts those thoughts are manifesting now in pain and stress 
in your physical body. And so then it's like, then you got to kind of start unwinding all of that. And so I think that, yeah, when you think of like manifestation, you think of like, I'm dreaming of a car and now all of a sudden I'm going to have a car sort of thing of like, yeah, that could happen too. But I think that if like when you're going into these bad places, some of the ways it's going to show up is in these Neg- like negative feelings and in your own body and how you're doing that. And then to think of like, wow, if I just took myself out of that spiral, if I start telling myself in another story of like, oh my God, Nick must be so mad at me. I know I was too obnoxious. I talk too much. Oh, why do you do that, Amanda? Mm-hmm. You're so like, you're so annoying. You're too much. He hates you now. And I'm thinking all of this. I'm like, oh, I'm getting tighter. I'm getting stressed out. And that's going to become chronic instead of the being like, you know what, like, I really enjoyed my time with Nick. And, you know, I I think that, you know, me and Nick have a a good relationship. And I enjoy my time together. And maybe sometimes I I push a little bit too far. But, you know, I I hope that he lets me know or whatever, I got to write it in my head. That's not something that I'm specifically worrying about. But, you know, then it's kind of like, well, you've then released that. And now you're just kind of manifesting more of that peace instead of this tenseness. And I think that, also the mindset piece too that I've talked about on this podcast, especially with people that I've come across over the years that are like, I want to lose weight, but I can't. Oh, I just can't do that. And oh, I suck at this. I've tried so many times and nothing works. I'm like, well, we've well, already set yourself up for failure. Right. If that's the goal and you've already started by talking to yourself about how much you suck at this and there's no way and I've tried it and I fail, you're not going to achieve that goal because you've already told yourself that you can't. And not that you have to go in there and be like, I'm, I'm a person with a six pack and think that you're going to show up like that the next day of just being like, no, I'm a person that I can do difficult things and I care about myself and I can push myself and I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to take my time. Well, eventually those things, those goals will happen, probably not on your perfect timeline, but it has to start with where your head's at. Mm hmm. So sorry, I just went off a total tangent. No, no. <laughs> you bringing me more thoughts too. Like, um, you know, it, be, it it becomes harder as an adult, I think. And um, I'm just kind of thinking back to when you know, we were in elementary. And some, some people might have a different experience. But I think for majority of us, when you're young and naive, you're going through the grades and you're passing the grades, you know, three, four, five, whatever it may be, you don't really think about failing that much right like it's like okay well I just this is what I'm doing I'm oh I don't know I'm going to third grade I'm going to fourth grade I'm going to go to fifth grade I was pretty intense about getting straight A's oh okay well (laughs) that that might be a little different but you know in terms of like not being able to advance right yeah I think again speaking generally here there are people that you know need to be held back for whatever reason but um, for the most part it's not something we thought about back then at least I didn't really think about like oh, okay well I'm gonna end up in second grade forever like yeah. I never had those thoughts yeah. you know what I mean it was just like this is just what I'm doing I'm gonna complete second and then I'm gonna complete third and then I'm gonna complete fourth and so on and so forth and I feel like somewhere along the way we tend to lose that okay well it's this and then it's this and then it's this and it's for whatever reason we start fearing the next step. And I don't know why that is, but, um, I think it's because, I mean, if I had said to guess, I think the older you get and the more life you live, you also realize how short it is. Yeah. And I think that it's scarier to make the next step because you know the impacts of those. And it's like, oh, well, I don't have as much time to unwind that bad decision. Right. Um, at least that's where I kind of feel about it, where I, I would consider myself a risk taker. And I feel like there's certain things even now where a previous version of me like, yeah, just jump both feet in. I'm like, well, I don't know. You know what I mean? There's things that come more into play with more responsibilities of like owning a home or like Mm -hmm. you having a family and all of these other things. So it's just kind of like, I think it's just, that makes sense. You realize as adulthood of like, wow, these risks could be more harmful than, yeah than good at this point and which makes things then I, I think until you hit that like it feels like most people hit I, I don't really think it's I don't know if midlife crisis would be the the perfect verbiage I would choose for that but almost like an awakening sort of thing of being like I think I don't know speaking for myself and people I know in my age group all kind of hit a point where you're like is this a life I really want because if I'm halfway through 
I want the rest of my life to be the way that I want it. And sure. then I feel like then it goes into this reevaluation of not of then having to really make a decision what the next step is instead of going with the flow. If right. you've gone with the flow and known like third grade, fourth grade, hey, I'm going to get married, I'm going to have kids, I'm going to do those steps. And you get to this point when you're like, oh my God, is is this the right decision or do I need to make a hard 180 somewhere? Right. I think that's when it gets like, scrambles your brain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's more options, I guess. And there's there's more things that, you know, you, you feel you're calling or maybe lack thereof um, can definitely throw a wrench in the gears. But I, I guess the point that I was trying to make was if we were able to continue that mindset as, okay, this is what I'm going to do and that's it. This is yeah. going to happen, right? Okay, yeah, there there might be some things that, you know, knock me down. There might be some things that cause me to slow up. There might be some things that confuse the hell out of me. Um, but I'm going to use the resources that I have. And if this doesn't work, I'm going to try a different approach. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to try a different approach. And it's just like, okay, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm going to get through this. It's going to happen. I'm going to make this happen. I think, I don't know, a lot of times people kind of lose that edge, that little you know, okay, well, this, this is just going to happen kind of feel to them. Yeah, this is just what it is. Right. And it's not going to be anything else. So right. you just kind of like resign yourself to, well, that's life. Right. Which, I mean, it's fine for some people if that serves you. I don't know. I yeah. don't really live that way, though. <laughs> <laughs> just thoughts I was having. But. Um, so what? Well, then what are you, I mean, you don't have to share this if you want. Like, mm. what are you trying to put out into the universe right now? Like, what are the things that you're you want to see yourself play out. Does that make sense? I probably yeah. worded that all wrong. No, I, I understand. Um, I, you, you and I had a conversation not long ago. I, I have kind of hit a little bit of a snag on like what is next for me. And I definitely think mentorship is what is going to be at least what I'm designed for. Um, so when you, when you said I was your mentor before, I think that, that made me feel really good because it made me feel like I'm doing something right the way I'm supposed to. And and this is stuff that I that I visualize. This is stuff that I that I do feel in meditation. Like I think I might have told you in an earlier podcast, I became a personal trainer after a meditation because I felt, and this is gonna sound woo woo, but the yeah. u- the universe speak to me and say, "This is for you. This is what you need to do. You need to help people this way." And, um, you know, I've done that for the past five years, um, 11 years, if you count the, the seven that I was, um, with, I guess 12, if I can do math, um, when I, when I was with the, the children's gym, but, um, you know, I think now is a time for me to be able to reach more people in a way that's okay. Amanda, I know that you're trying to become the best personal trainer that you can. Let me show you what I know so that you can help more people. So then in return, the people that you help indirectly are kind of people that I've helped. Yeah, for sure. Right. So and I want to be able to do that um, with more people and not necessarily just with fitness, but um, probably with spirituality, um, helping people you know, mentally and spiritually and physically and, 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 and all those ways and be able to create peace in the world some way. Um, and I think that's a, a Miss America type, yeah, type, right? type way to <laughs> say it, but that is really what I feel like I've been designed for is to create peace and create, whether that means peace in your own mind or peace amongst one person to the next. And um, that's what I'm trying to figure out now is what is that next step though I can feel like I'm fulfilling what I've, what I'm meant for. Yeah, but that's already like such a huge gift that you have that you already have that feeling of what you're meant for. I feel so many people feel so lost because it's like, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I have right. no idea. And you just feel like, you know, it's like, hey, pick a college major. Like, I don't know what I want to do. Like, I don't know what I want to like, sure. you know. And so I think that just even having that level of it is so huge and something to be like super thankful for. Not saying that you're not. But yeah. It's like that's like a huge, huge puzzle piece. No. And it's good to hear that, too, because, you know, I do recognize that <clears throat> in that journey of 
figuring out what to do in my life to make me feel like I'm fulfilled and make me feel, you know, when I, when I pass, make me feel like I've created some sort of legacy for to somehow better the world. I think, um, at least knowing how to do or knowing what I meant for is huge. And I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Um, but I think when you're in the middle of it, trying to figure out, okay, now I think I'm pretty positive what I meant for, what is the best way to carry it out? And I think that's what I'm trying to figure out now. Um, and that can be a difficult time too, being yeah. like, okay, well, I think I'm affecting a lot of people's lives this way, but I'm pretty sure I can affect more people's lives. But how am I going to go about that? By Ooh. coming on a podcast. By coming on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, well, I know that like, well, and I know that just talking that you're also very like musically inclined. And so, and I know that you were talking about the, the little piece that you wanted to play here. Like maybe yeah. that's something you could combine all of these things together of, you know, affirmations, moving things forward, giving thing positivity, and also using some of your music background. And like, have you ever thought about that of like tying those two worlds together? Yes. And actually, you know, where I excel in music the most, like I'm not like the greatest, you know, um, instrumentalist or vocalist or anything like that. Where I excel the most is writing lyrics. Mm. And um, I think that I've always had a way of trying to create lyrics that are positive and have a good message, which I think can be lost a lot because, you know, everything that's popularized these days is, is lack thereof, right? Like it's all just, you know, degrading women or overly sexualizing yourself or, um, you know, you know, battles beef with each other or, you know, I think that's what really seems like it draws attention when you hear a really good positive song, like it sticks with you because I feel like you don't hear them enough to, it kind of just, you know, everything else bleeds into the background. But when you hear a positive song, it's like, bam, it hits you. Like yeah. you, you notice it. Right. Um, and there's the one that I said I was wanted to kind of play. It's been, um, this is not my song by any means, but, um, just something that I, that I like to visit more recently. It's starting to trend on, um, TikTok and Instagram and all the other social media platforms, people are using it and hopefully it sounds okay through this, but, um, basically it's an affirmation rap and I thought it was really cool. Yeah. I think if anybody is on TikTok, they probably heard it. I mean, at least I know it hit in most people's algorithm at one point or another at some point in right. 2021. Yeah. I saw it a, a lot for a while, but everything just kind of ebbs and flows on TikTok. And yeah. that, that time span for things to be trending is shorter and shorter and shorter, too. Yeah. Which that's a whole nother discussion. It's but social media. In my <laughs> personal opinion, I think this needs to be more of part of something that lasts a little longer. Hopefully it'll it'll last a little more or at least there'll be it'll inspire others to do other things similar to it. Um, you mind if I just go and play? Yeah, go it? ahead. Everything that I need, I already have. Everything that I have is all that I need. Anything I desire, I will receive because my reality is created by me. I am successful. I am peaceful. I am free. I am wise. I am potential energy. And like a phoenix, I should rise. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am power. I am talent. I am mind. I am body. I am spirit. I am balanced. I am enlightened. I am fearless. I am outside the realm of time. I am a part of the all and I am one with the divine. Energy, energy, energy. All around on the outside of the enemy. There was no hate in my heart. I even had love for my enemies. Ah, energy, energy, energy. I like your vibrations to enter me. Put my intentions into the universe. Whatever happens is meant to be. Uh, energy, energy, energy. Positive and negativity. The power within to create what I will. The divine spirit has gifted me. Uh, energy, 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 energy. Uh, energy, 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 energy. So I think that was really cool. Like yeah. the guy that created that just absolutely killed it. Um, you know, from the syllables matching perfectly to what he, the words he's speaking. Um, and I just think that more people should try to create things like that to inspire others to 
feel good and create good thoughts. Well, what you could do, you know, it'd be kind of fun. I know that you're super busy, so not to like, hey, here's a work project for you. <laughs> right. But it'd be kind of cool as if like you made a Spotify playlist mm-hmm. of finding like a bunch of songs like that that kind of speak to you. Yeah. And that'd be kind of cool. I mean, I'd be happy to share that. It'd be something kind of fun to play here at the gym one morning. Yeah. Where everybody's training just like a whole workout playlist of just like positive just affirming positive songs. Just positive music. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good idea. Um, and, you know, besides music, like just using, like, by the way, like, you know, everybody's doing the Spotify, would you listen to 2021? Yeah. Like w- the one was like, what is your aura? What is your, your song aura was the, one of the ones that flashed up and it was, um, positivity and positivity and healing was the one that popped up on mine. Oh, nice. So I think that really helps me. And just the algorithms that you're creating for yourself within Instagram or TikTok or whatever is social media p- platform that you use um, can be very beneficial or harmful depending on what you do, right? If you're constantly clicking on, you know, bad news or if you're constantly clicking on thirst traps or if you're <laughs> constantly clicking on, you know, people getting crushed by weights in the gym, whatever it is, like you're yeah. just seeing this negativity constantly. And I think those ones catch our attention. So we're like, oh, what the hell's that? And then you're like, okay, let me scroll to the. But then it starts feeding you more of that. You have to actually consciously, like, if you if I'm looking into my Instagram currently, my popular page, the first one that pops up um, is a quote from the Dalai Lama, and it says, "Remember that sometimes not getting what you want is a wonderful stroke of luck." And that's just me picking the very first thing that pops up. Yeah, and that's. Basically what, you know, I get a lot of fitness stuff on here too, but that's basically what my popular page is, is just positivity and, and quotes. And, you know, I, I put something as my background. It says one day you'll be a memory. Do your, do your best to become a good one. Oh yeah. And that's on, that's on my screensaver and, you know, that, and, you know, create, um, you know, pieces and you know you can do reminders in your phone or you can do alarms in your phone that pop up and say something you you can call it something i am powerful or i am a force or whatever it is that you want to put on there just make it make it prevalent everywhere make it so that wherever you look wherever you're feeding yourself you're feeding yourself positivity and i think Mm -hmm. that has really helped me a lot because even when i do spiral into a place of negativity somewhere where i'm looking is going to is going to give me something positive well and kind of to jump off of that something again i ebb and flow with that i I would like to be better at but again and everything is kind of a practice is kind of when i'm having those like down moments and i'm like what do i really need to hear what right now like what positive affirmations do i need to hear whether it be from myself or someone else and then i text it to myself oh yeah so then i'll text myself the things that have like I need to hear right now, like, no, you, you're smart, you're capable or, or whatever the things are. Yeah. And then it's nice to go back and see like my text messages to myself of just all of these things that I know personally, like, yeah, I need to hear about myself, but I'm telling them them that doesn't mean it's not, or it's less worthy than if another human told me those things. It's most important that I tell myself those yeah. things. So I like that too, as a, as a nice reminder, whenever I remember to do that when I'm in the the flow of doing that. It feels really good. And like the same thing when you just kind of fall off. I think that's just ebb and flows of waves of life and then be like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm missing that outlet. I need to kick that back up again. Or yeah. if I'm not doing my affirmation, something that um, I learned too of just because it's just being um, just a, a lot of like introversion I have and just also like I just want to just take pain away from everybody like when somebody is in pain like all I want to do is just take it away from them or make them laugh or whatever and then I kind of hold on to those things Mm -hmm. and I let that crush me a lot and so of also just thinking all of those things too of just like I'm putting myself in a bubble or whatever I need to do not that I'm not letting other people in but it's just like I'm kind of protecting myself my energy of just like okay I want to help people and I want to be able to take things away but I'm like I can't hold on to all that either so then putting yourself in that just whatever visual headspace that is. And maybe this, you're listening to this is like, God, this is woo woo wee, but like, but if it works, it works. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, of even if those sorts of things of, I think it's just stopping and taking a second and visualizing it. So I do that in the shower every morning of just kind of think of like, okay, I'm, I'm, 
I am, you know, everything that is mine is is with me. Anything that's not doesn't belong to me, I'm let get, letting go of. Mm-hmm. And just to be have like try to just put myself in that headspace. So by the end of the day, I just don't feel crushed. Yeah. And so it, there's that, that's the thing though. It's just life. That's every day. There's no figuring it out, and it all just goes away. And I think that's just with a healthy lifestyle with anything of like it's consistency. And it's and it's work. But once you see that work is working for you, then you want to stay more consistent with it. But it's never just going to be like, well, I did all my affirmations today. Never have to do it again until I die. Right. I'm done now. Yeah, I'm at peace. I'm right. zen. <laughs> right. <laughs> do it once and that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, as as trainers, our job can be very difficult in that way because we do get a lot of baggage from others you know people come in and they're giving you reasons why they fell off or they're giving you reason you know things that arguments that they've had with their family members or you know things that have happened to their children or whatever it is that's happening like we hear that stuff and we're um you know in a sense somebody that's coaching them through fitness but also helping them um decompress and basically therapist on top of it right we, mm-hmm. that's not our we don't know how to deal with that because we haven't been trained to be therapists but we are in a sense a therapist and um now it's funny that you say that because the way i visualize that oftentimes is if somebody is giving me their baggage like that i'll do the best i can at listening to what they have to say but i actually envision a triangle in front of me and i see the triangle um, the point is in front of me and, and the, uh, the flat end is, is kind of towards me and I see the words that are coming out of their mouth and I, I see it kind of spilling off to the side and it's mm. not going through me, but it's going on the other sides of me, right? It's, it's spilling out um, in a different direction so that I don't take that on. Yeah. And um, I know, like you said, it's, it's woo woo, whatever, yeah, yeah. but it, this stuff is real. Like in the stuff that, you know, for those of you that aren't on board with that kind of thing, it's like, if you've heard of the, um, the, the scientific laws, like objects in motion tend to stay in motion. Objects at rest tend to stay at rest. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the same thing happens with verbiage and words, right? You put something into the universe, it's coming straight back at you. Or if somebody says it to you, it's going to go through you. So you try to have to kind of have to try to learn how to not take that on for yourself. Yeah. Well, and words matter a yes. lot. I mean, they're incredibly important. And you just even think of like, what's something that was said to you when you were a kid that still like sticks with you? Like, I think that's, you know, I spent a good amount of my time in my 20s being especially like explosive, explosive and aggressive and not dealing with my shit at all and not knowing where anything was coming from. And so I've spent my 30s kind of deep diving in that and starting therapy and everything else. But it's like, wow, like uh, how many hurtful things did I say to somebody? And I'm like, and I didn't mean to. I just didn't know how to react or somebody hurt me. And I just wanted to cut them back with my mm-hmm. words. And I'm like. And that sticks with them forever. And I'm like, that yeah. sucks. Like, I, I, there's so many people that, because especially because I've moved around so much, that like knew me then that don't know me now. Mm-hmm. That I'm like, oh, I, I, I hate that that's the only version of me that I knew. And I, I hurt people and I didn't mean to. That wasn't my intention a lot of the time. It's just I just didn't know how else to behave. But I'm like, but I did the best I could with what I knew then. Yeah. And moving forward, I want to be more mindful mm-hmm. with my words and knowing that they have weight to them, positive and negative. And like that's that's an important thing, too, of just so and knowing that that's impactful of, you know, I just stuff like just little examples. Like my best friend growing up, her mom told me one time she's like, you would be so pretty if you would just lose weight. And like stuff like that is just and I've had a million instances of stuff like that, you know, just when my entire life that just stick in my head forever and you think of those things yeah but if you're saying those things to yourself to kind of bring it back to where we started this with if you're saying that to myself of like man and I didn't know uh, you would just be so pretty if you would just lose weight that's like a shitty existence for me to just constantly think that I'm not good enough or I'm not beautiful I'm not physically attractive at all because I haven't lost weight that's a lot of pressure to put on myself and those words are living in my head Mm -hmm. forever and like oh that's just that's, I, I've lived that, and that is not a pleasant place to be 
at all. And then getting out of it is also not the most pleasant, which I am such a big believer of asking help. If you can't walk through those things in your mind to kind of get out of that headspace, absolutely therapy or and friends, coworkers, family, like whoever you need to reach out to, like, you know, spiritual guidance, whatever of like, that's not a good place to be in. And that's not true of yourself. Right. It's hard. Well, and I think you understanding what that feels like um, can help on the flip side of things, or at least if you if you use it in a positive way, you knowing that you could have potentially harmed somebody with words that you've said in the past that you're maybe nervous that they're holding on to the way that you yeah. held on to things that people have said to you. And you can't change what you've done in the past. You can only try to start new pathways to create yeah a better you or a better future or whatever it is that you're striving for. Um, I think that potentially reaching out to that person and, and letting him know, know these things like, Hey, I know that I've said some things to you in the past. You know what? I'm, I'm a better human now and I'm really sorry for what I said to you. And if you can remember what you said to him, obviously, you know, if it's been a long time, Mm -hmm. you might not remember exactly what it was, but for this for this person, maybe she said you would you would be beautiful if you lost weight. You know, maybe if she's in a better state now and she understands um, life a little bit better to the point where um, she's able to kind of come back and um, apologize for what she did and and say to you, you know, like look, like you're just a beautiful human being. You, it doesn't matter where you are, and I'm sorry I was wrong from where I was. I think that can go a long way, too. Yeah. Well, I just think people don't even realize that those things, one of those, oh, man, it was early on the podcast. Um, I'm blanking on the guest, but she shared the story about how her mom made one comment to her in high school about, like, her thighs being too big, and it spurred almost a lifelong eating disorder that she went through for, like, through her pregnancies and through her thing. And I, she went, God, I'm like, why? I can picture her right now and I can't think of her name. I'll put it in the show notes. But just one of those things of like, wow, just one comment. I'm sure her mom didn't mean to have that sort of impact or it was just something in passing of like how that can really affect somebody. But to say that on the flip side of like, I have a, somebody told me I was a force and now it's like tattooed yes. on my body until I die. You yes. know what I mean? And it feels like this feels like, a way of life. And I want to see myself of like how impactful positive words have. And so, yeah, maybe you can't take back the negative things you say or, or or whatever, but it's like, but you can moving forward, choose to create positive words to share with yourself and with other people. And that can make just as big of an impact, if not bigger. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most of the podcast we've been talking about the words to ourself, but I think that's just as important too, right? Like, um, you know, if you if you're thinking something positive about somebody, tell them. You know, like how many times have you thought something positive about somebody? Oh, wow, that person is really freaking strong. Or like that is I've seen I see what you did before, and now I'm seeing what you do now, and it's man, you've come a long way. Like saying those things to people can make a big impact. Like you obviously know as is yeah. the force that you are have tattooed it on your arm now, and yeah. you know who knows. It, I don't know if you ever see that guy ever again, but no, you know, he I probably has him. no idea the impact that he had by just saying those words. Yeah, it was, it's crazy. And so that's like, and I, that's something that I struggle with of just giving compliments because in not because I don't want to, it's because I feel them. I don't know. There's just this weird sort of like fear barrier that's I'm working through in therapy. Sure. But I'm trying to make it a point more and more now to try to, when I, I feel something or I see something to like point it out, even if it's as small as like, I like your glasses. Yeah. I love your shoes today. Like, Oh, you look so happy today. Like mm-hmm. the vibe or just anything. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to have a co- more conscious effort of like, say it out loud Yeah, and not coming from a place. I think to, if I want to play armchair therapist on myself, it's coming from a place of like, if I give that away, it's a sort, it, it feels like through the stuff where I've been, it feels like vulnerability. It feels like I'm leaving my, oh, if I tell somebody how much I care or those things about me, then it leaves an opening for them to come hurt me. Right. And so to work through that where it doesn't mean that that's Mm -hmm. not true in every scenario of like, no, it's okay. Go give the people the compliment and say the, 
you know, the thing that you're feeling, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, a, it's an interesting issue. That is the force that he's talking about. And yeah. now all of a sudden it sounds like we're talking about Star Wars. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, did you have anything else you wanted to add to this discussion? You know, we probably could talk about this subject forever, but I think we've touched on a lot of really good points. Just be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and use kind words. Awesome. Well, thank you, Nick. Thank you. AmandaValentineBites.com